Welcome to Spirit School. I'm your mentor, Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. In this podcast, I share honestly all I have learned about the mediumship and spiritual development journey. My intention is to normalize these conversations, to make way for a more confident, clear, and connected wave of lightworkers, serving the world of spirit with an open and joyful soul. Welcome again to Spirit School. Hello, Spirit School listeners. I hope you guys are amazing. I hope you're enjoying September so far. I got a ton of feedback from the um, spirit messages. I know it was not the most positive, but so many people were saying that they were able to resonate and hopefully you got some really good tools within there on how to navigate these interesting times. I will also say that a very grounded thing I've been experiencing lately is I got this book called Braiding Sweetgrass and it's Indigenous Teachings. Um, you know, how to live in harmony with the planet and with Mother Earth. And it is such a beautiful book. And I have to say, it's really helped me calm around everything that's been going on in the world, all the things that are really annoying. And so I just wanted to pass that along to you guys as well. It's been a really great book to kind of put things back into perspective for me. So I'm going to highly recommend that book. It's called Braiding Sweetgrass. I have the audible version. I really like it because the author reads it. And I think for me, I just absorb information more when I hear things, which is why I'm a podcaster, because I love listening to things. Videos distract me, but I really do love listening and I absorb information that way. So definitely check it out. I think it might be exactly what you need at this time to kind of ground into this human experience, find beauty in this place that we live when things seem so uncertain. So definitely check that out. It's been really helpful for me. So a little bit of a background to the reading with Bridget. So as you guys likely know, I have been just approaching different Instagram followers that are very engaged with me, whether they're in my posts or my DMs. And once in a while, I'll reach out to one of them and say, hey, can I give you a reading? And some of those readings end up on this podcast as um, Spirit School. Not all of them. I usually do two or three a week. And I think I've only posted a few for various reasons. Um, But yeah, I was happy to share Bridget. So I have this woman who I've been in communication with for at least a year. And she has an odd screen name, as most screen names on Instagram are odd. And when I asked her, I said, you know, I just feel really called to give you a reading. Will you allow me to do that? And we set it up for um, August 31st, I think it was. And when she gave me her email address to uh, schedule it into my booking system, I noticed that her name was Bridget and I was like, whoa, there's a Bridget in my community in the initiation circle, but she also has a different screen name on Facebook. So I was getting really confused. So three different names. So when Bridget appears online, I see that it is the initiation circle member Bridget and I just had to smile. So very cool, very exciting. Again, I'm not great at placing names and faces and especially Instagram handles and Facebook real names. Like I'm just not good at remembering them all I talked to a lot of people so uh, it was really cool to see it was her so therefore I just wanted to give you an update that the editing that happens within this podcast episode it might seem like it starts off in a funny place but when she logged online I was shocked so we ended up talking for about 10 minutes before we started the reading so at the very beginning I cut out the portion of us just like chatting I was like oh I can't believe it's you I wasn't sure I kind of had this like idea could have been you but the names didn't all match so anyways so that part's edited and then of course I also ask her can you spell me your first and last name and I edit that part out as well um, because as much as I would give you her first name I don't want to give her last name we want to keep some sort of level of anonymity within this experience so the other thing I just wanted to share at why I ask people to spell me their first and last names and I don't do this for every single reading but it is something that I learned to do pretty early on in my reading for the public because I was really nervous showing up for reading so the reason why I started it was because I was really nervous before my readings and one way to kind of center myself before I start reading for the person and connecting with the world of spirit is asking them to spell their name. I don't need that. I know that that's their name but it was a good segue for me to go into a reading it was a space for me to kind of write down some initial inspirations but then also calm my nerves 
in time to read for them. So that has evolved over time because I don't get nervous before my readings anymore. I do get this nerves feeling, but I recognize that to be my nervous system activating in preparation for talking with the world of spirit. And so it can be kind of mis construed as nerves but it's just my nervous system activating I've learned after a long time of thinking I was just scared so the reason why I still sometimes do this in my sessions is because the voice of somebody carries a vibration and I've learned over years of doing work for the public that actually getting them to spell their name for me though I can get them to spell anything I can get them to spell rainbow or the town they live in it doesn't matter what they're spelling what I need is their voice and their voice does carry a vibration that allows me to tune into um, their energy and activate them and get them out of their head as well. It's like, here's something to do. Give me your voice. You'll often hear that if you watch mediums work all the time, they'll be like, I need to hear your voice. Give me your voice. That's also why some mediums prefer to work over the phone. All they need is a voice to connect in with. And so just to give you a little bit of a teaching here, this is why I ask people to spell their names for me. I just want to tune into the energy of their voice. And there's something that happens. It's like this linkage happens, that three-way link that we need for mediumship with the sitter, the spirit, and me, the communicator. And so I hope you enjoy this reading. You could stay for the end. She did send me a little bit of a voice memo for further reflections that she had after the session. So stay tuned to the end if you want to hear an update from her a couple days later about her session with me. I hope you enjoy the session with Bridget. let's just start so just to be very clear about the things that I do know I do know that you have, you've lost a husband like that's what we initially reached yeah. out and so just to give full disclosure that much I know I don't know anything else um how when who like I don't know anything like yeah. that um correct and we will just kind of see where we go so um just so you know the way that I typically work with the world of spirit is I literally just expand my aura I invite them in I give them the sign that it's my time to work they step near me and I'm very open to using all my clairs so sometimes I hear things I feel things I see things and I just give it to you how I get it if it looks like you may be confused I may add um some context to how I've received that information in the past, it might make sense. If it doesn't make sense, it might later keep it with you. And I will definitely hand it over to you at some point during the reading to ask any questions or see if there's anyone else you're hoping to hear from. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, so definitely feel male present here. I get all sweaty. I don't know if you get like that when you read, but immediately I start to get into Sometimes. <laughs> the sweat. I'll be honest, the way that he's talking to me, I don't think that this is how he always talked, but it's very quick. It's like fast. It's like, we don't have much time. We got to hurry. We got to hurry. And this also made me feel that this was related to um, how he passed as well. It was quick. It was like not a whole lot of time. So it's like, we got to talk fast. We got to think fast. Like everything just seems to be very quick. Whereas before the illness, I feel he had a much slower pace to him, right? Yes. Like there was a lot of chill to him. Do you understand this? Yes. And so he does make me feel, I can't tell if this is related to the illness or how he felt, but he definitely made me feel very nervous. I felt like my heart palpitating. I felt a lot in like my chest area and my throat. Do you understand this with him? Um, yes, there are some things surrounding his passing that I don't quite know, but I suspect that that is correct. Okay. Would you have known him to be under the influence of like medication of some kind? Because he does make me feel that like the heart palpitations and like the quickening are like an effect of something. Do you understand this? Um, not a medication. No, but I mean that, that would probably make sense. Yes. Okay. So you understand that because he makes me feel very much that it's not his default way of being right like this is something that like is very quick that's the only yeah. way i'll see if it can come through clear with him but he just wants to get that through it's like he's talking so 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 fast i'm short on time short on time short on time is how he makes me feel yeah i will i do get the sense from him that he had an awesome sense of humor i do yes. get the sense that this is somebody who loved to laugh and joke okay like i'm hearing a lot of laughter i'm hearing a big personality when I look at my husband, he's so quiet and you can't get two words out of him. Like this guy like had friends. He yeah. loved to connect with people. I feel like there's like two or three men that he really connected closely with. Do you understand this? Yes, absolutely. Cause he, he had that personality to him, but he was very select on who he actually created friendships with. 
Yeah, he's showing me this kind of real camaraderie with two or three gentlemen. Yeah. And they would like, I don't know why I'm seeing like, it might be very typical or not, I don't know, but like kind of like this man cave that they hang out in and like there's music and like a couple beers, like it's a very kind oh, of yes. thing, right? That he hey, showed I was trying to think, I was like, where is that? But yes, it's at his best friend's place. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, and he really enjoyed those times. Now, do you also have a son? Yes. Okay, he needs to talk about his son because his you have two. Is the name Scott important to one or both? Because there's two reasons why I get Scott. It's either the name Scott or it's the middle name um, that is very important. So one of those two things. So is there a middle name that's passed down or actually the name Scott? There's a middle name that's passed down. Okay. So just know he wants to reference that as well. Yeah. There is one boy, I feel very much it's younger ones. You have two boys, because yes. you held up your finger too. So if this yeah. airs, so people know. The younger one feels a lot more like him. Okay. I will say like, he makes me feel very, okay, let me see how I can kind of tune into this. I'm seeing, uh, he is showing me through his eyes, a very handsome boy. <laughs> like he, he looks a lot like his dad. Okay. Cause I was like, I have to say that he is very handsome because he's bringing <laughs> me some sort of reference that he looks like him or, you yeah. know, so it would be kind of his humor to say like, he's very yeah. handsome, yeah. Um, yeah. very yeah. handsome. And I get the sense too. I don't know if he's five or if he's even just like a little bit younger. Like I feel like a, a like young. Do you understand this? Um, okay, so five. He's at they're young, young actually, three and one. Okay, but five would be um maybe I was five months pregnant when my husband passed away. Okay, thank you for validating that because I keep seeing the number five yeah. with him. Okay, so and also like the month of May is also of significance as well. Thank you. Thank so, you for validating yeah. that. Cause I'm like, I kept seeing yeah. five come up. So just know that that is from him as well. Mm -hmm. So very important to know then that he sees son now recognizes the name being passed down. I feel like it would be him. Do you understand this? Yeah. Okay. And just like feeling incredibly honored about that. Um, yeah. And I get covered in shivers. You also need to know, and I believe that you do know this, that he was with him before he came in Earthside. Oh, yeah, I know okay. that. And it makes me so happy. But I, yes. thank you for telling me that. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's what mediumship is. It's really just kind of validating things that you already feel and sense mm -hmm. and know. And he also is very much wanting, I don't feel like this is somebody who was romantic or touchy feely when it comes to emotions. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. he's more like humor and stuff like that, but he does want me to get deep here for a moment and really express to you that you're doing a fantastic job. And yeah. I feel like you're a very strong woman who doesn't ask for a lot of external help in any way, but he yeah. hears you in your quiet moments, you asking him, am I doing a good job? Like, am I making you proud? And he is yeah. wanting to use me to respond to you to say, you are doing a marvelous job. Like I'm <laughs> literally like bowing to you. Like you are doing an incredible job with my boys. I do okay. sit there and ask him at night if I'm doing a good enough job. <laughs> yes. But I bet you the people around you wouldn't think that you would do something like that because you you're like strong. Yeah. You're like, I Correct. got this. Yes. Right. And yeah. therefore you can sometimes feel a little bit lonely or isolated because people just think you have it together. And he wants to bring up very much in the emotion that he hears you in those quiet moments and that he wants you to know that you're doing a fantastic job as well. Um, he's showing me balloons. It's always significant of birthdays as well. Okay. And also like an anniversary, was it July, which was an anniversary of some kind was July. Cause um, I know your birthday is August, but. Um, July is um, our older son's birthday. Okay. And so that's yeah. when we had a joint birthday party for them that month. Okay. Cause I was seeing, cause earlier, if we do post this, you wouldn't hear that you said your birthday was in August. I think yes. I recall you saying, but yes. he's like, no, there's balloons, but there was also something in July. Right. Again, yeah. that was the kid's more evidence party. that <laughs> yeah. he's seamless and connected. Yeah. Um, his mom is still here. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. She's struggling. Yes. She's I have to questions today. Okay. I'm glad. So thank you yeah. for saying that because he's like, man, like she, she is definitely struggling, but he makes me feel that you can't be around it too much because it, it affects you. Right. He's like, and he understands, oh that, right. He's like, because yeah. you're not moving on, but you're moving along. Like you got two kids and he's making me feel she's, she's doing what she can to keep herself together. And then in my mom's yeah. energy, it kind of crumbles a little bit and that can yeah. really affect you. So around mom, you're very guarded yes. with your energy. You understand? Oh, so, so much. Yes. Okay. So Nail just on the head. 
okay, so he's showing me this so that you know that that's okay, right? It's like, you're not here to rescue her in any way, shape or form. As you know, as a mother, it is yeah. so different losing, you know, even thinking about losing a child versus yeah. anything else in our life. There's nothing that compares. Yeah. So he makes me feel that he is around mom quite a bit. Um, I see her gardening. I see her like with flowers. I don't know if she like drops flowers off for him or there's something around like flowers or a garden with her. I don't know if you can validate that. She's been spending some more time out doing yard work and, and gardening and stuff this year than she usually does. Um, uh, so yeah, that probably, that would probably make sense. And that like, that makes sense in a few different ways. Okay. So, cause what he's yeah. showing me is that he is getting through to her in those spaces when she's like with flowers or gardening. So it's yeah. almost like she's not dwelling on the Sora or dwelling because we know with grief that that can sometimes be a bit of an energy barrier to sense the presence of our loved ones, but it's yeah. actually when she's like gardening and with the flowers that he's able to actually blend with her. And okay. I feel very much that is during those times that she feels the most at peace. Now, what I love to get from the world of spirit are things that you won't even have to effort to validate. I have a feeling very much that a story will unfold from her that, you know, I was thinking about him and um, the name Ryan just popped into my head. Is there a Ryan connected to him or you? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. No. Fair enough. I just have to say it as it's kind yeah, of like popping totally. in and I'm connecting in with mom. So just know that I just want to share the story with you. And I feel like he wants to share the story with you so that you don't feel any responsibility for her healing journey. You understand this? I absolutely do. Yeah. It's been, it's a challenge, the relationship there. Um, and she, <clears throat> there's some religious barriers as well that are creating some friction and she's attempting to kind of like push herself onto her her choices onto our life as well and I'm really struggling with that yes. um and I just was hoping to get some insight from him if that's what she's actually doing or if I'm reading too much into it because I don't want to accuse her of something but it does feel as though like she as of lately is really pushing some stuff on us that um we don't want and I mean we including my husband like he doesn't want that either the way that he's making me feel as you're talking about this is that she's trying to control something, right? Yeah. And so uh -huh. the word control comes around because sometimes the only way that we feel sane is if we have control of something. Yeah. So this is actually just part of her healing journey because she feels so out of control because she had no choice over this passing and she did not want to outlive her child. And I totally yeah. understand I mean, that. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so she's just trying to control something so that life makes sense a little bit right okay. so I feel very much that even earlier when he was talking about like you not asking for help and you not kind of like expressing because you don't want to be a burden and you sense what that might feel like a little bit yeah. that it is okay to speak up for yourself and you know you have enough tact and you have enough grace to do that in a way that is like not offensive and not like closing any doors okay. and even just simply saying something like you know we're both handling our grief in very different ways and when you approach me like that it really kind of impedes my process of healing as well and kind of saying it from a perspective of look we're both trying to heal here yeah. and we just need to respect each other's ways that we're doing this right yeah. and kind of getting by mm -hmm. that's what I feel inspired to say yeah. to you around that yeah. does that help it does. Yeah. It makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense. And the control thing makes a lot of sense because I feel as though she's trying to control the way that the kids are going to be raised about certain things so that they, it doesn't go in a certain direction. Cause she didn't agree with some of my husband's life choices and our life choices because yeah. of the religious barrier. Yeah. Um, um, and so I, I feel as though she's trying to manage that and control that. And that's a part of her, her grief because she's fearful. And, exactly. and so that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yes. And so even what I truly believe happens, I have no evidence to back this, but I do believe that us even holding this conversation and kind of breathing life into what's going on at a cellular and soul level, there's a lot of energy that kind of dissipates because of that. So I actually would be surprised if like the next time you guys communicate, things kind of soften. That's what I love about this kind of energy work right <laughs> yeah, I, I agree I have no evidence for it either but that makes complete sense to me as well and I've experienced that so definitely yeah. definitely yeah. Yeah. um I will say it's important for you to know um this sometimes is uncomfortable for me to express but he is trying to bring someone in for you okay like 
a partner. Okay. So I feel like too, this may have been very in the undercurrents of things I ho- you were hoping to say, but he is saying like, it's okay for you to move on um, and kind of getting that permission slip that there will be someone else coming into your life if they already haven't come to your awareness um, and to not be surprised when that happens. Okay. Because he makes me feel very much that there's someone coming in. I get a C letter, just so you know, like I'm seeing the letter C kind of come in okay. and you'll know when it happens. Okay. So I hope it's okay that I say that it's usually a bit hard for me to say that when somebody's grieving, but they'll yeah, take the opportunity. I really don't like to hear that when that comes up. <laughs> I don't want another partner, <laughs> I know. but um, the only thing that I could ever see being remotely functional is if this person accepts that they're third wheel in an existing relationship (laughs) absolutely and just so you know the timeline on this there is no timeline on this it's just something that will unfold and it will unfold in a time when you're ready but what I want you to remember and often this is like the intelligence of spirit is they don't want to just leave you with things that happened in the past but they want to leave you with things that will happen in the future that they are kind kind of being very supportive of but what he's saying to me in a very humorous way he's like you're too good of a catch he's like you are way too good of a catch to to not you know be supported by someone and so he just just know that this will come in perfect timing and there's no rush and there's nothing you have to do or look for but what I do feel very much is that when things start to unfold in a way that's very natural for you you might remember me and maybe other readers say things like this and then if you ever have questions around is this right or would they support it absolutely absolutely okay Um, I know that he's fine with it fine with it if I did choose that path so absolutely yeah absolutely and you're not going to collect riff draft okay like (laughs) not if 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 spirit is involved especially when it comes to like raising your boys um there's going to be no riffraff coming your way. Okay. It's going, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be solid. Um, I know they're still quite young, um, yes. but I will, I, I keep seeing hockey. Okay. Like I keep seeing okay. like the sport. Okay. So again, you may forget I say this, but it might just naturally become an interest to the older one. I'm feeling very much. Yeah, definitely. He's very like sports oriented so far. He's really good on his feet. And <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he's showing me him being very athletic and, and I feel like he might eventually, um, get into hockey. I also get the sense that you've had experiences through your son about your husband. He's making yes. me feel like he said something or you've had experiences through your son about your husband you understand yes, this definitely I have a few times yeah okay, so this is validating it it's like almost yeah. like your kid would have said or you're like whoa oh, like, things and it's like where'd yes. that come from <laughs> so because he's still a super sponge at that age yes. um he's going to continue to do that because okay. you're happy because you're so open like yes. he can come through so easily for you so I do feel there's been dreams I do feel that he messes with time um like I do feel like there's like a consistent time that you'll see but it's not necessarily 111 or something like that it's like 10 10 like it might be like a little bit odder you know but there's a a few numbers that I see um that I associate with him one of them is like 426 oh my god I was just gonna say 423 I was like is it 423 I'm like <laughs> so one of them is 426 and I okay. see that I, I do see 1111 but I there are some obscure numbers that um he he shares with me as well <laughs> yes and there's something else that he wants I don't know if you can smell him like there's something around like a sometimes yes a scent he's like I'm coming through in a scent so you I can actually smell and then you get shivers right it's like you smell him and then you get like full body shivers so yes. again just validating for you that he is here like he's around and I know you don't need me to tell you that I know that you're no, but I like to hear that, it right <laughs> absolutely absolutely um have you also and I don't know this about you but do you have you made a career change since he passed like have you been toying with that idea because I feel like you're going to be doing quite a bit of a pivot were you a teacher before um no I was contemplating eventually becoming a teacher um I was a stay-at-home mom but doing school for either psychology or social work or teaching or something along those lines and I'm still kind of doing that but since losing him he's the one that blasted the mediumship door open and now I'm looking to create a more integrative practice between them all 
um, and kind of, yeah, utilize my um, experiences with loss and my connection with him to create a new path kind of thing. Yeah, okay. that is coming. Yeah. I feel very much that that is coming because I kept hearing the word teacher. Yes. Um, so then if you're into like the mediumship stuff, like you, we have similar energy, I feel. So like yeah. teaching may be something like I knew when I first started developing, I wanted to be a teacher. Like yeah. the first, I told you guys this before, but the yeah. first time I heard spiritual philosophy, it's like, I want to teach it. And I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if you have that same kind of bug. I do. Um, yeah. I would love to teach, um, like at a university level, even an integration between like, um, traditional values in psychology and philosophy and integrate it with the world of spirit in like a long time from now when it's ready the university systems are ready for that that'd be like a dream goal of mine okay awesome <laughs> well I definitely got teacher vibe okay cool. so again you were like kind of like lost on like which way do I go yeah. Whatever, closer to being that teacher being the presence in front of a class like inspiring young minds like and not even young minds we're well, all young at heart I feel like yeah. that would very much be a path that he's encouraging on you do you have any more questions with his energy um, um yeah, I do. I have been using like a pendulum board and been considering like a Ouija board and stuff like that to sometimes chat with him and talk with him. Is he like, is that something? Because he wasn't really a wordsmith bully. Is that something that he wants to do from spirit? <laughs> yeah, I was like, for, if my husband came through, he can't spell it all, right? I'm like, it would just be a mess on that Ouija board. <laughs> Honestly, what I want you to play with, okay, what I want you to play with, because I think like even part of this reading, he's been validating for you, like he's there, like you know yes. when he's there, it's the time, it's yes. the scent, I mean, that's rare, it's yeah. talking to your son, I strongly feel that much of spirit communication is a transfer of thought, okay. right, so I it's get that a lot, so yes. the fact that you're even saying that means that when I think it's him, it's him. Yes. And you'll know, right? Like this is what discernment is. It's like, yeah. you'll know when it's wishful thinking or your own ego. And I don't say ego in a negative sense no, no, no. at all, but the desire, right? Yeah. And then, you know, let's attach the ego. So I think that all you have to do is actually transfer a thought to him and he will respond. Um, and you'll know when it's him. And then if you're ever doubting, I'm feeling very much that you just simply ask him for validating, um, things to conspire around you that validate that they do that a lot for me yeah. right it's like without me even asking it's like they can sense the doubt in my heart yeah where it's like you know did I just wishful think that and all of a sudden a phrase the exact phrase I heard appears around me so he's going to give you that so I'm not against Ouija boards I'm not against pendulums for spirit yeah. communication but I think that you are powerful and confident enough to yeah. just receive the transfer of thought and in the end no matter how we end up developing I do believe that spirit communication ends up being a transfer of thought it's quite yeah. simple but we have to go through all the hoops and learnings to kind of be able totally. to fall into the trust and faith that takes well and that's just it right like that's why I was like give me something with letters so that I can have like you know concrete right instead of because you know I'm still so much in grieving right now in grief and and so I get that doubt in my heart and that insecurity that that what he's giving me is wishful thinking right instead of what it's actually is which is him and he's he has validated that for me on mul multiple occasions and it's like he'll give me something and then it'll come immediately with another sign to validate it. And it's like, I need to trust that. <laughs> Do you remember my meme from yesterday where it says, I just want to sign your sign? <laughs> That's why I said, I was like, I'm feeling called out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, yes, I totally feel that. And I get that. And you know, the fun thing about spirit is they don't judge you for that. They're not gonna be like, yeah. no, you got your sign. It's like, sit back and enjoy it. But what I will say that the more time that passes, right, you'll be able to really receive everything that you get without any hesitation or doubt. So honor that doubt and honor that hesitation. You're building your confidence as a reader and it will all become a lot clearer. And he's not going to stop giving you signs. I will say too that I very much feel a grandmother in spirit. I feel like it's mom's mom. I have to say, do you have a mom's mom in spirit? Um, I have a mom's mom's mom. Okay. <laughs> in spirit. But she like always felt to me like that. Like she felt as close as a, a grandmother. Yes. So I'm just, he's with a woman that I feel is connected to mom's side and like close to mom. I feel too, again, the name sharing. I don't know if like, there's like a name that like your mom has that she had or grandmother yes. has. Yes, yes, so, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's her kind of connection. I also feel her and your mom look alike. Um, yeah, you can definitely see some similarities, <laughs> especially from the side. Um, like I'm seeing kind of like 
you'll look you'll see it. Go yeah. look at the side, but she's making me feel very much. Um, I'm not going to bring her in too much. I just have to acknowledge her yeah. because I also felt like very much that she was very much around earlier. She's yeah. a lovely energy, very yes, peaceful actually. Um, very demure is how I want to say. Like I actually want to move my hands properly, and I want to tidy myself a little bit and yeah. um very ladylike is yeah. how she makes me feel yes. um I also want to say the word rose I'm not saying that that's that it is, yeah that's is that name. her name yeah that's her name and that's my mom's middle name and okay. um yeah there's another way that that ties in as well <laughs> okay yeah because she's like showing me beautiful gloomy rose and yeah. I'm like I have to say the word rose with her um she's yeah. a very strong advocate for you in spirit and always has been yeah. you know it's almost like ugh, I guess she's covered in shiver she's so close it's almost like you know they know what's kind of coming up for us yeah. in our lives like that's the perspective that they have and she makes me feel like she was surrounding you well before all this was going on and um yeah very much an advocate for you and 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 helping guide you very much um and she thinks that you're doing a fantastic job and she also makes me feel that you wanted a girl to call rose as well do you understand this yes my husband and i i mean my husband and i, I we actually i now know that we actually miscarried a daughter um and her middle name was gonna have rose in it <laughs> yeah so she's just acknowledging yeah. that again just bringing you through evidence like yes. she knows all this and yeah you know that she's there I don't feel like there's any lingering grief or anything like that but I think it's important yeah. for you to know with her that she, I, I keep calling her an advocate right yes. so I feel that way about her from spirit yes yeah. so if you ever had a hard time um, you know, with the concept, like for me, I have a hard time with the concept of a God. Like I, of course I believe in a creator, yeah. but I use the angels to kind of like access that energy. It's like this in-between space mm -hmm. until I can get there. Right. And I believe that day will come. I'm just not there right now. Yeah. And so she's kind of saying to you, like, you can use me to kind of be that person and that connection into the yeah. other world as well. Right. So right. even I'm hearing very much, he, he brought her in, right? Like he's the one who's saying her and, you know, if we do believe, I don't know where I stand on this belief, but I'm hearing it. So I'm just going to say it, but like, if you feel like he is struggling, getting to you the way that you need, you can also ask her to come in and maybe show him or to add power to that experience for you, because she'll definitely want to be that kind of like, you know, as I say, amplifier of energy for yeah. you. If that makes sense. That, that, that does make sense. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sometimes um, it's, I think it's not so much that he struggles to get to me as so much as it is that I struggle to let down the like grief barrier enough in yeah. a way to, to be more receptive to energy. Cause grief to me feels like I'm just in this like closed in little box and I'm like not present in anything else. Yeah. And, and so sometimes I struggle to, to feel him because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of and that's, you know, in mediumship, because you're getting into this too, like that's typically why we say the wait six months, because that energy of grief, I know when I went through grief last year, I couldn't read. Yeah, not clearly anyways, like it was just such a it's such a fog. So I know what that feels like. And it's nowhere compared to what you would have experienced. So just know, yeah. you're doing absolutely fantastic job um yeah. he's not talking very much about his passing I hope that's okay that I don't bring that's that okay. I don't know some details and he tends to be a bit elusive about it because of that he is protecting me <laughs> okay so thank you for for validating that because it is something I typically like to bring through but it's almost yeah. like he doesn't want to talk about it he just yeah. makes me feel like it was quick there was nerves there there was some stuff with the heart I have to say and um but he's happy he's like you know he's he's like you remember him you know he is like you remember him and he is never going to leave those boys alone and he is going to be with them forever and he's going to continue to remind you well, that he stays with me that much too right <laughs> absolutely okay, absolutely <laughs> he will and you know even when the grief subsides and you know years have gone by he's still just as close Okay, you don't actually have to, and I have to, I feel like it's important to say this, okay, that you don't have to stay in the state to keep them close, right? Yeah. So it's like you don't have to be yeah. sad, you don't have to pull out the pictures, you don't have to reminisce to have them close. They are just close because there's that bond and connection of love that yeah. is indestructible. That's a good word to use. Thank you. It's hard sometimes, I get scared that I'll forget or yes that he'll leave again or you know something like that those are just my 
you know, brief insecurities, but yeah. it's it's a lot and it feels scary to lose him again in that way. Yeah. And so I appreciate being reminded that he's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. And, you know, even if you don't think about him for a couple of days and then that guilt kind of sets in because you're like, oh my God, it's been a couple of days. He doesn't go anywhere. He's still yeah. a thought away. And even when you're not thinking of him, his energy is still close to you because he makes me feel like you have a lot of work to do in this yeah. life. Like you have a lot coming up for you and yeah. whatever he can do to support you on your path moving forward, he will do. Okay. And then just like a final message here is please don't worry about mom. Just express it how you need to express it because it's not your responsibility to his mom, I should say, to no. like fix or amend or anything like that. You're on your own individual journeys. And so yes. just say what you need to make sure that your quality of life yeah. is and those needs are met. She will be able to handle whatever it is you need to say, and he will work with her as well on getting her the signs and stuff that she needs on her healing journey. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, it's so tough sometimes. I mean, it's tough every day, honestly, but it's, I like the word indestructible. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> indestructible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You. You're very welcome. And, you know, there's a lot of love between you guys. It was a, it was a genuine love, right? And yeah. it never goes away. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. I mean, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know how, um, people like oh uh, yeah I don't know <laughs> I'm just a little bit overwhelmed right now but it just it was it was it is a big love and it still is and it always will be <laughs> and it's so hard having him be in spirit and even though I know he comes through and I feel him and I hear him and he sends me signs and he double validates me and he's in my dreams and everywhere he's everywhere it just it still hurts so much absolutely I want you to know Bridget there's no cure for grief no it's there's, there's no cure. it sucks it absolutely sucks and even knowing that they're still around and yeah. even knowing that they can still make intelligent contact with us it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make it better and it doesn't no. you know it's not good enough no. right it's not good it's enough not the it's same. Not and i know one day i'll be you know reunited with them and and then it'll be like no time has passed because you know time doesn't exist apparently but <laughs> for them at least yeah <laughs> for them at least but, yeah no thank you very much I appreciate that it's always my favorite to hear from him <laughs> absolutely he's absolutely. the best <laughs> and I love him so much he loves you so much yeah I do, feel, I do feel that thank you Bridget. She was a lovely sitter. I felt like this was a very healing reading. And just based off the correspondences that we had afterwards, I do know that she received a pretty deep healing from this experience. So I love that her husband has come through a few times before, and I'm sure that he'll continue to come through for her so that she knows that she is never alone and that he will stay with her until they meet again. So I'm just going to play for you a little recording of a voice memo that she sent me a few days after her session, just some further reflections and pondering and a bit of a review, actually a testimonial of sorts um, about her experience with me. So I'm really excited that I got a read for her. I hope, hope you guys really enjoyed this. Stay tuned for the next episode where I have my favorite medium of all time, past and present, Aboriginal medium Sean Leonard on. And if you're interested in learning about mediumship development yourself, because I'm not running the initiation, my six week program until January, 2022, come check out the initiation circle. This is a development group for all light workers, people who are developing mediumship, psychic ability, angel work, Akashic records, pet communication, medical intuition. It's a whole mixed bag in that community, but it's a safe and supportive space to practice and start to understand your own abilities. So maybe we'll see you in there. As someone who has lost probably the most profound and intimately connected person in my life, um, I can tell you how absolutely wondrous mediumship is. It's been a solace and a light on the darkest of days. And trust me, there are some dark days. 
Um, but even listening to someone's reading doesn't quite do it justice as there's just something you can't quite understand until you've experienced mediumship personally. And that's the remarkable and tangible, palpable energy of a reading. When Danielle was connecting to my husband and delivering his messages, I physically and emotionally felt the warmth of his presence so profoundly. And it was amazing. One of the most validating and comforting parts of her reading was when she brought through the evidence of things that have happened since he crossed over, as it just fills my heart to the brim with hope and love, knowing how present he is in mine and our children's lives. And Danielle's delivery is so warm and genuine, and she honestly holds true space probably better than anyone I've ever met. It's a really un undeniable gift of hers, and I'm so glad to have been on the receiving end of it. The words of love she spoke to me through my husband brought me so much comfort and love and I've kind of been on cloud nine since our conversation to be honest. It's truly, truly not something you can fully understand until you've experienced it and I cannot express enough gratitude for the connection and magic and love that Danielle brought me and my husband. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Spirit School. If you did, please leave me a review and a rating wherever you're listening to this podcast. And if you do feel called to share this with your friends, thank you for tagging me on Instagram at Squamish Medium so I can also share. It really helps get the word out about the podcast. If you're interested in working with me in my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, a reading, or all the various programs that I run, you can go to SquamishMedium.com or check me out on Instagram at Squamish medium the link in the bio has everything i am currently working on in service to the world of spirit have a great day guys